Yeah, so uh, I'm Carmen. Um, you know, whatevs. But um, anyway, uh, Payasa. 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 That, is, that is my graffiti name. How long have you been an artist, though? Um, I've been drawing since I was like a little kid. Like I remember, like those fucking public coloring contests, man. I would do <laughs> shit all the time. Did you draw the turtle and the the, um, and the, and the and the pirate and the bear? No, I never did that. Shit. I was too good for that. But coloring. But yeah, I've drawn for a long time. I guess I just never really refined it. And actually, before I met you, I had stopped drawing for the longest. And I remember we had been talking about it, and I brought you one of my old, like, shitty sketchbooks. I'm like, yeah, I used to do this crap in high school. And I remember you responding to it really well, and honestly, you know, I'm not trying to get all sentimental and, you know, here, but you actually kind of pulled me back into art. I'm glad I did, though. So, I'm glad I did. And, and then, you know, of course, my first horrible attempts at graffiti letters were met with. <laughs> So, I also learned to take constructive criticism for you, so... Oh. Uh, moments, I'm sorry. That's what happens when you put girls on the show. Fiasaart.tumboy.com. Oh, that's nice. Just saying. Okay, I know. Well, you know. Link it up. There's no link in the description. So, aside from, from graffiti, would you have any other names for the style of art? Um, I don't really know. Like, I was, I was, it, kind of like a gothic, you know, I like to put some fetish elements into it, you know, I like to, you know, get that leather effect on some stuff, you know, I like kind of the creepy, morbid, I've always been attracted to that kind of stuff, I remember reading like, one, like horror books that I'd find on the shelf and just had the most twisted shit and just eating it up, I loved it, so that just, I don't know, it followed me and I just love being a creepy person, like my dream is to own a hearse, that is my dream car, you know, that's just the kind of thing. I thought about that, myself. Yeah, I want a pink hearse. A pink hearse. White leather interior, disco ball in the back, coffin preferably used. Do you want a, a, you want a used hearse? You want a hearse that's actually had corpses? Of course. You want a coffin that's been used? Yes. That's going to be a little harder. I'm just saying, pre owned coffins seem like they would run a little bit cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> that's a verbal thing. <laughs> well, I'll see what I can dig up for you. Ha! Ha! Oh, that's guy. almost <laughs> like humor. <laughs> oh. Art Spiegelman's work has been inspiring. It like really inspired me. Absolutely. So you were talking about Art Spiegelman. Yeah. He, did, he illustrated for Mad Magazine too. I believe so. Um, he also did uh, like the the wacky packages, like those things like that. He's amazing to me. Like um, the first time I ever encountered him was reading Mouse, and I loved Mouse. Like it just oh. it was really poignant. And if you've never read Mouse, it's a graphic novel where he's basically telling his father's story of the Holocaust. And it's not just like your normal Holocaust story. He's talking about his relationship with his father too. It's it's an amazing story. I've read it several times. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to know more about who he was. So I, I bought a book called Meta Mouse, where he talks about Mouse and he talks about his career and all that sort of stuff. And I just kept just getting like more information, more information. And I just recently purchased uh, Breakdowns, which is a bunch of his like comics and stuff like that. And they're always very personal, you know. Like he's talking about uh, there's Prisoner from Hell Planet, where he's talking about his mother's suicide and. This is the guy who made Wacky Packs. Oh well, yeah, he worked on that kind of stuff. Yeah, this guy, he's just, there's just so many dimensions to him. Yeah, Frida Kahlo, absolutely love her. Uh, Mexican painter. Um, Salma Hayek played in the movie about her. It was really hot, by the way. <laughs> but just, as an artist, like, if you can just go, just Google her right now. Like, she puts a lot of pain and a lot of surrealism and... Everything's really personal for her as well, and I like that whole, like, just, I'm putting myself out there for you to scrutinize and When you say it. Mexican art, I, I think of that folk style that's, like, very crude, but you can tell that they're skilled artists, but they're very crude with their, not crude, like, dirty, yeah. but crude in their anatomy and yeah. structure. Is she doing that, or is she No, doing no, no, no. Um, there, are, there are elements of that kind of folk art you know, arty thing in there, and, you know, she draws a lot of self-portraits because for a long time, you know, she actually was injured when she was younger, and, like, she basically had, like, a railing from a bus, like, go through her side and out, you know, her womanhood, and, uh... Oh, God! Yeah, so, she was in the body cast for a long time, and that's what she did, was she painted, you know? Her father was a painter, you know, so she painted, and all she knew was herself, so she would paint herself, and, you know... And she painted, like, portraits of herself with the, like, like healing the injury, like... The yeah, thing. like, you know, well, not, not necessarily healing from the injury, like, it's just, there's a lot of dimensions to Freaky Cow, just, just go Google it, Wikipedia, that shit right I will now. definitely be sure. But, uh, she's one of my big inspirations just because she didn't hold back. Like, one of my favorite paintings of hers is called The Suicide of Dorothy Gale, um, where basically they commissioned her to do this painting for their daughter who had just committed suicide. 
spray the paint in the actual fucking suicide. Like instead of doing a portrait, she painted the woman oh falling, you know, falling to her death. And I liked that she didn't hold back. You know, she was just like this. I'm is... sure the family didn't appreciate they it. did not appreciate it. For some reason, but, uh, it just seems like. I just feel like I'm in like, a good place again, and I want to do it. Like every day, I, I think about stuff I could be drawing. This is actually something from 2012. I love the color work too. By the way. Yeah. The so, um, fantastic. My leathers, you know, they're still they're still coming along, but uh, you know, I put a lot of emphasis on my what I call my Bayasa girls. You know, my girly characters. Do things kind of cadaver-y, you know, you know, with the like the Y-shaped scar. Or like any kind of chest scar, I don't know, I've got to think about that. And usually they're kind of sexy and creepy. Um, I've, I've hated the leathers on this, so I'm just going to show you the character. I was pretty happy with that one. Let them take my LSD. Yeah. So that was, that was something that I did, you know. Because it, it was based on this Latin thing, you know, the same that, you know, you're, you are dust now and to dust you'll return. So that's where this, that has going, but... I haven't quite finished it yet. This is another, like, the letters are shitty, but I was really happy with the colors, even the way it turned out. Yeah. So. Oh, it seems fucking awesome. The concept's good, too. Yeah, this is this is one where I was actually pretty proud of my letters. Um, when I first started doing, like, the graffiti S things, which everyone, you know, that shit you do in your fucking notebook right next to your I Love Justin Timberlake shit. Um, you know. Oh, yeah, I remember now. Okay, I was about to say, yeah, you did. Um, so my my tag back then was Queen of Fools, which one of my teachers absolutely hated, but I really I you know, I felt like I kinda of didn't fit in a lot, you know, so that was kind of my thing. So um I have this thing about like queens and royalty and stuff, so that was that. Oh class of the pictures. Let's <laughs> see what exactly the puppy did in the garden. Okay. Um, another another good example of like but yeah, kind of more happy with my character work than anything else. You know, another one of my Bayasa girls. Um, oh, Bayasa girls. My Bayasa girls. For some reason, I imagine like there's a big. Yeah, this is what I'm working on now, but you guys will probably see that later. So I'm not gonna show you too much. Um, one of the fetishy things. This is actually a Lincoln Park line. We're living at the mercy of the pain and the fear. I don't know. I. I I don't want to explain that one for fear of angering Jesus that much more today. He's already cried five times. Oh yeah. So, another character. That was kind of me getting back into things. Yeah, that was the, the tentacle. Yeah. The tentacle porn came up when we were, when we were talking about this one. So. Um, you, know, you say that as if I, it's, like, it's like out of place to bring up tentacle porn at that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty letters right there. I that one earlier. No. Yeah. Cool I actually have a Luigi, like a little rhinestone right Luigi that I wear most days. Like I wear it in place of a cross. I'm like, Luigi, man, I really need you today. So, me and Sean bonded over Alice in Wonderland a lot. Yes. Because we're both really huge. And I'm not talking about Tim Burton. None of that. I'm talking about the real shit. Like I'm talking about the original illustrations. So, yes. um, this is like a piece I was working on. I'm not really happy with the letters, but I was really, this is a fucking good Jabberwocky. Yes. Just like freaking yeah. John Travolta and Pulp Fiction going, this is a fucking good milkshake. I don't know if it's worth $5, but this is a good fucking Jabberwock. Just kind of going through kind of fan. Let's be, you know, just some drawings and stuff. But yeah, you'll you'll see pictures of them. This is my Paul Schaefer-esque <laughs> caterpillar. Oh my god. So just some more stuff, some more stuff, and you know, whatevs. This is actually one of my favorite pieces. Like I called it game over at the time. I don't know if this one I'm particularly proud of. This is Clowns vs. Octopi. Alien Octopi. And as you can see, this little guy cephalopods. is obviously afraid of the cephalopod, so he's saying, oh shit, this clown card is buried in a crater. It's chaos. So I, I made my own Lady Gaga. It's Lady Graga. <laughs> and this is myself as a spy from Spy vs. Spy. I am obviously the pink one. Oh! Holding the pink. Thanks for that. Yeah, nah, just Thank you for having me, Sean. <laughs> this has been truly an experience. And <sighs> it just, uh, it's byasaart.tumblr.com. Yeah! I'm gonna go do something else. I'm gonna go for it. Jesus! <sighs> you come bearing gifts. Yes, yes, I brought some stuff for you. So, uh, I got these for you. Can the dead really live again? Would you say yes? No, or maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it really does. The cover it says, "Would you say yes, no, or maybe?" That's awesome. Thank you. 
Oh, I wouldn't be free of comfort when loved ones die. Freedom from a morbid fear of death. You have to turn this into some sort of zombie thing. Being with the dead loved ones. <laughs> <Mom>. <laughs> Hey, God has resurrected humans in the past. Right. He's eager to do it again. So that'd be awesome if like God like brought a whole bunch of dead people back to life, but they were all like stuck in their coffins. And not zombies, but like, you know, just like just or, like, or, like, or, like, your coffin. You're walking yeah. through, you're walking through your, your family room and all of a sudden your naked grandmother like sprouts out of this urn, you know? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Give me some clothes! If I let me roll them up, they're just sagging. Okay. Get this! <laughs> oh yeah, you all thought it too. Okay, okay. Moving on, moving on. Um, will suffering ever end? God, I hope. No, because then there would be no humor. Wait, so does this one also have the... Yes. You say yes, you no, say or yes no or maybe? I'm gonna say I, I, no now. I like that all three of these have this this option on the, on the front. Like, they think that, you know... I don't know, maybe the answer is in here! What? Reminds me of the Simpsons movie when he's going to the Bible going, This book doesn't have any answers! <laughs> funny. But yeah, there's that one. And then, who really controls the world? Satan? No, we should do like the, what was it, Dana Carvey? Like, when he was doing well, translating? Well, say yes, no, or maybe. No, no, no. Do you think it is God, humankind, or someone else? Who, Satan? Who? <laughs> is that what they mean? Because... There's not God, humankind, and uh, what, angels? Oh my god, Satan's rulership is doomed. What? So they're saying that Satan rules the world, though. Yeah, like I was actually kind of getting comfortable that, with that fact, and now it's doomed, so now I'm never going to be able to wear any fetish gear or strap on ever again. For all you know, God could want people to fetish gear or strap Dishonored is actually a really, really awesome uh, first-person shooter, kind of in the vein of Bioshock and stuff like that. And uh, they had tarot cards as the uh, as the, the, the pre-sale bonus. And these cards are really pretty, so I thought you might like them if, if for inspiration and source material. That's racist. And that's why Malcolm X is my uncle. <laughs> Woo! I don't know how you ever recovered from that. How is your anus doing these days, anyways? Um, 